AV Forums CES 2024 coverage is sponsored by MPB. If you have camera equipment you no longer need and want to move up to the latest tech seen at CES, then why not trade up with MPB, the largest global platform to buy, sell and trade used photo and video gear. Visit mpb.com to see what they can do for you. Welcome back to our CES 2024 coverage brought to you by MPB and this afternoon we're with Samsung Display and Chirag and we're going to talk about third generation QD OLED. So it was only just one year ago that we were talking about second generation QD OLED. Here we are, third generation. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about what's new this year with the th third generation. Sure. So with the third generation, there are three things that we are bringing to the users. First, brighter displays. The TV panels are now capable of over 3,000 nits. Uh, more durable, so longer life lifetime. And thirdly, is our sharpness. So what we mean by that is by improving our manufacturing process and completely rehauling it, uh, we're able to now have sharper resolutions, so more higher PPI, as well as uh, better uh, refresh rates. This is enabled by two things. One is our quantum enhancer, what we call the QE AI driven TCON logic. And the second is our Pico inkjet uh, printing process that is now being redeveloped to ensure and enable uh, higher PPI displays, with which we are now able to launch two new sizes on the monitor side, the 31.5 UHD 240 Hz display and the 27 QHD 360 Hz display. Now just staying with the monitors, um, obviously the QD OLED, it's a unique pixel layout, it's a triangular layout. And in previous generations, text and small pieces of text have been slightly difficult to read because of that. So what improvements have you made there? Yeah, so the pixel uh, kind of uh, setup has been completely improved. Uh, compared to Gen 1, you'll see that uh, with the higher PPI and the new pixel structure, that is almost eliminated. <clears throat> we had various users try it, and there is no more concern uh, when it comes to the uh, issue that you described. Now, um, we're talking about brightness, you said 3,000 nits. How is that actually measured? Is that a 2% window, 3% window? Sure. So it's 3,000 at a 3%, what we call extreme peak, and 300 full white. Okay. And it, is that just in one hit, or is it able to sustain that brightness level? Um, so any OLED, um, I think that will depend on the application by the um, set company, the brand that is making it. For example, some of our professional displays uh, that we have here uh, would have a much longer uh, sustainability of that. But from our perspective, uh, we can sustain it much longer than the usual use case. So one of the interesting aspects here, um, we'll get onto color accuracy in a minute, but it was the extended color range that you'd be talking about in your presentation. So maybe you could explain that to us. Sure. So why did we you know, work on this experience color range. Um, this is developed using the CCAM 16 model, uh, and this was developed in close association uh, with our R&D lab and the RIT Munsell Color Lab. Uh, the reason for that was that previously, uh, it was okay to just measure the luminance because you had an LCD display, uh, and if you made it brighter, it would increase the color. But with today's different display technologies, it's when with the deep blacks that you already achieve, it is of great importance to understand the impact that colorfulness has on the human perception. And the way we perceive brightness is a combination of luminance is what we measure, but luminance is measured only from black to white. We, the luminance that is measured today does not include the colorfulness aspect of the display. And with displays like the QD OLED that recreate wider color volume, it is imperative to understand what it is that they are actually, how they are going to be perceived. And that's what the XCR value allows us. What, how it moves from theory to practice is that you use an XYZ spectrometer to kind of gather the 3D data, which is both the luminance and the color values. And that, using the CCAM model, is closely, um, uh, is basically helps you understand what will be the perceptual value of that? And that is what leads to XCR. 
Now, getting back to the, the brightness side of things, um, you, you're now saying 3,000 nets, I think it was 1,500 nets last year. So how are you actually achieving that brightness? Is it down to the panel or is it down to processing on top of that? It is down to the processing. So we uh, basically spent the last year working with the material and the pixel structure that we have and developed a more efficient driving algorithm uh, using AI and machine learning. And by having a better processing algorithm, we are able to increase the luminance <coughs> without actually increasing the power needs of the display. And adding more brightness, you have the potential then of image retention. It's an OLED display at the end of the day. So what mitigation have you put in there to stop image retention? <coughs> So, as you can see in the thermal scans, that was one of the reasons that we wanted to show it, was that even with the higher um, kind of, you know, luminance, we have, because this is not being driven by overdriving circuit, but by more efficiency, so we're not drawing in more power, we can actually not have the artifact or this kind of image retention that one may see on some other displays. Just to wrap up on the, the Pico um, inkjet side of things, um, what is the reasoning behind that and maybe you can explain to maybe those who are watching who don't quite understand the difference between QD OLED and WRGB OLED sure. maybe explain that and then why the Pico side of things is really important. Sure so <clears throat> the basic difference is that the white OLED or the W plus RGB is a four pixel layer <clears throat> and it uses a white backlight or OLED self emitting backlight but then it also uses color filters to create the white plus RGB pixel. In the case of QD OLED, it's a tri-luminous display. That means it only has RGB subpixels. And the way we create the RGB subpixels is we start with the blue black light, which is a higher energy waveform, and then using quantum dots. And these are printed quantum dots on a subpixel level. We can now down convert the blue light into precise red and green wavelengths. So that's the core difference. Now here's where the Pico inkjet process comes into play. For us to <clears throat> kind of move towards higher resolution, especially on the smaller monitor sizes, we need a better printing technology. And that's what has the Pico Inkjet now enables. By completely rehauling the Pico Inkjet uh, or our Inkjet process, now adopting the new Pico Inkjet processing, we can create displays that are 140 PPI. And as you saw, we have plans to further increase it as we go forward. The benefit to the user is that now you have a 31.5 tri-luminous RGB display using the QD OLED technology in UHD resolution and a 27 QHD, both 16 by 9, uh, using the QD OLED uh, panel technology. Now, a subject that's close to my heart and a lot of our viewers is image accuracy, colour accuracy. It's one of the reasons why a lot of us you know, gravitate towards QD OLED because of the colour volume that's available. So what have you done again this year to improve colour accuracy? Yeah, so I would say this year uh, what we have done is we have worked with Pantone to kind of tune and certify our panels to meet the highest colour standard that Pantone states, the Pantone <coughs> colour certification and the Pantone skin tone certification. Now. <clears throat> the other aspect that I want to highlight is that ever since we launched QD OLED, we received a lot of interest by the creator community, especially Hollywood, etc., to how can we bring the QD OLED technology into the studio space. And I'm very happy to share that this year, last year we launched the 55-inch uh, QD OLED, and this year we have 31.5 UHD display that that kind of meet the resolution, the UHD resolution, as well as the high color accuracy, color uniformity aspects of the studio environment. The further benefit of QD OLED is its off viewing, off access viewing, and its overall gray uniformity, which is you know helps the content creators kind of get the most out of their imagination when they use the QD OLED. And I guess one of the things that I need to ask you before we wrap up this year is that 55, 65, 77, are we going to see the TV side of things move into 42, 48 and so on? Um, no comments at this moment. Uh, we're definitely, when we have the announcement, we'll come back to you. Excellent. Well, uh, good luck for this year. It looks like amazing technology once again. Uh, thanks. It was great to see you guys again.